as an adult, was able about, let's see, it's, is it eight years ago now? Um, eight years ago, had a Israeli Hebrew teacher. So basically what I've been sharing with you is everything that was taught to me from an Israeli. Okay? So we're going to take a look at the, the series of vocabulary. What I'll do is I'll start from right to left. We know pronouns from our Hebrew book. Uh, we have this pronoun here. We have Ani. Can you say Ani? Ani. What is Ani in English? I. I. So we have the pronoun I. First person singular form I. And then we also have um, underneath that we have the masculine singular um, you. Okay? So we're going to have Ata. Okay, so we'll go ahead and write this out in Hebrew. So we have Aleph, what else? Noon, Noon and Yud. Yud. Now we have Aleph, Tav, and He. So we put in the Fatah and the Kamats, and we have Ata. Okay? So we have Ani, we have Ata, and Ata is what? You. 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 Masculine <coughs> singular. Okay. Now, in this lesson, we're not going to go over the feminine, but what would be the feminine of you? In a singular form, would be aunt. So, ata. We say that in blessings. Baruch, ata, Adonai. Right? Elohim, Haolam. Okay, so we see here the uh, pronoun I is ani, and you is ata. Um, and then we have a, a wonderful response when someone asks you, how are you? We have the word beseder. Beseder. Be. Okay. Um, the letter bet with the shiva underneath it. And then we have seder, which if you change the vowels, you will think of the Passover seder. So we have here seder. Okay, and this is the same root meaning as a Seder order. So it's kind of like saying everything's in order, or everything's fine or okay. So we have, we're just going to put in English, simple, okay. Okay, so if I were to ask you, Mashomech? Beseder. 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 Okay, so Beseder means everything's in order, everything's okay. So we have in, and then we have the word for order. That's why a Passover Seder refers to the order of the meal, the order of the story, the order of the actual Pesach meal or celebration of Passover. Okay? So we also have another word that's related to the Seder and uh, also the Seder, which is the um, Seder, is um, another form of that word. We have the word Sidur. And what is a Sidur? A Sidur is a prayer book. I should have brought mine in, in the car. I use the arts rule Sidur quite often, but a Sidur, um, I have a messianic uh, one here. Uh, I'll pass that around so you can just take a look. That's a messianic Sidur that adds uh, messianic blessings along with traditional blessings. And uh, we'll have the Lord's Prayer there in Hebrew. But a lot of the prayers we pray in the synagogue are all found in that book. Art Scroll has a little bit more complete um, prayer book. But Sidur is actually the order of prayers, starting from the morning, usually midweek, uh, or excuse me, or a weekday, up to Shabbat, which, you know, will have a series of blessings and prayers and liturgy, or psalms and readings. And then even into the feast days for special occasions like a bris, a brit milah, or um, a wedding. And all of these blessings are in there. Even the loss of, of a loved one, you would say, um, uh, you would say Kaddish. And so that's from the word Kadosh, meaning holy. But it's declaring God's holiness in the world which he's created, even when you're mourning or grieving. Sometimes called the mourner's Kaddish. And we usually say that on behalf of someone who's lost a loved one. Um, and so all of those come from this word, beseder, or come from the root here, uh, samet dalet resh. Okay? It means to be.
be in order. Okay. Um, going down on the right side, uh, down we have a name, and this name is just two letters, but a simple name. We'll have a, a dagesh in there just to make it make sure we know it's a strong D because it's a pro, it's an actual person's name. So what we have here is the Dalit and the Noon Sofit, which is the form of the Noon uh, that is at the end of a word. So here's Noon in its normal form, and here's Noon Sofit. If we were to imagine an imaginary writing line, it would go past the line. Remember, there's five final letters, and four of those final letters, actually, the bottom line or part of it extends down past the writing line. The only one that doesn't is Mem Sofit. It just looks like a box. Okay, so here is the name here with Dalit, a patah, under, I mean a kamat underneath, and nun sofi. How would I transliterate this letter, uh, this name? Just give me the, the letter here. D A N. What name is that? Don. Don, yeah, very good. Don. Or we would say in English Dan, right? And if I put the name of God there, Daniel, I would have Daniel. Dan means judge. Daniel means God is judge. Okay, so we see the name Don. And then we have another D word. We have Dalit Vav Dalit. Dod. Very interesting word. It almost sounds like a word you hear in Song of Solomon. Dodi, my beloved. Okay, so we, here we have this word, uncle. Huh. I, I don't know if you think of your uncle as beloved, but... <laughs> okay, so what we have is uncle. Okay, as dog. Uncle is dog. Probably at another time we'll learn the, the feminine, but I'll give it to you now. Doda. Doda is an ant. Okay? Doda. So it had the A sound at the end. Okay? Um, so here we have the famous question. Uh, starting at the bottom, we have Mashlom Ha. Um, so here we have Ma, which means what? And then we have the root of Shalom. We have uh, the word shalom, but we have the chasofit at the end. So we put in the vowels. We have shalom, shalom, ha. Okay, so it would look like that. So to make it understandable, put the question mark in there. Okay. Um, we might as well jump over. Um, let's jump over for a second um, and just look at the female form of that. Oh, there is a typo there. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a small typo in that. Yeah, this was a first generation print. Again, I told you, I, this document was lost on one of my computers, so I have to retype the whole thing. But, in the meantime, we'll look at this, and I'll fix the typo, and I'll let you fix it, too. Madiba, did you find it yet? Ah. Uh. Singular for student. 
Okay, then we have the word. Now, this one we spell with the, not the letter ta, uh, we spell it with tet. And this word is what we say for a lot of good days. We say yom tov. Or we could say tov me'ot, very good. Or we can say laila tov, er tov, good night, good evening. Um, we could say, um, we can say, um, mazal tov. Ma yeah. Mazal tov is mazal Yeah. Mazal tov, which is mazal tov, which is saying basically like good luck. May the heavens be in alignment um, for your life. It's kind of the concept, because mazal is actually the alignment of the stars. So just as Abraham was promised, your descendants will be like the stars, the idea is that the stars must be right. God must have the stars in position, because the stars and the sun and the moon are for signs and for seasons. They're there to remind Israel that God's promises are true. And as long as the sun, moon, and stars are in the heavens, the concept is that God is in control. So sometimes the word the heavens or the stars are, are a circumlocution for God himself. Because God is the one who, who has his power, his glory beyond the stars, the sun, the moon, the, 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 the sun and the moon, and the stars and the heavens. Okay? Uh -huh. So, again, the world takes that and turns astronomy into more of astrology. So again, you don't want to study the stars so you can predict your personal future. But it was to remind Israel of the prophecies, not predictions, but prophecies of not a psychic, but a prophet of God who would reveal that God would do certain things at certain times, and the sun, moon, and stars have always been used for the calendar. Even uh, knowing when Shabbat is starting, you'd have to look up at the stars and say, okay, the stars are telling us that uh, the Shabbat is here. Okay, Just like the star over Bethlehem told the Magi that the Messiah was born. Star of Jacob will arise, Balaam's um, prophecy, yes? Rosh Chodesh is the same way. Rosh Chodesh, uh, Rosh Chodesh mm -hmm. is the same way, the new moon celebration. You have to look up at the sun, the moon, and the stars to see what God is doing in his time clock, in his calendar. Okay. Um, you know, I just remembered. We actually, did we finish all of the months uh, last year on the calendar? I think we did. Right, yeah, last week we did the calendar, right? Okay, so that kind of connects at least, connects the training because, you know, we're, we looked at the calendar last week, we looked at all the months, and so this week we're looking at this lesson here, okay? Now, we have Tov. Okay, we have another name here. Let's write this name out. I'll go ahead and put what this word means. Good. What's the name we're looking at? Okay, so we start, we start with the, uh-oh, look at it. I almost put the dot on the right. I did put the dot on the right. I have to move it to the left. And then we have this name here, Sarah, which is Sarah. That was the name that Abram's wife was changed to, and his name was changed to Abraham, and her name was changed to from Sarai to Sarah. Um, and this name means princess. Okay. Now we see that the word that we get the statement ma shalom ha comes from this word here, also spelled with the letter sheen, but with the dot on the right. Okay, and this word is a word for peace. What is this word? Shalom. Shalom, okay. And then we have the question Question ma. Question here, ma. And that is what? Okay. So literally, when you're asking a person, how are you, you're saying, ma shalom cha or ma shalom ef, what's your peace? Or what's your peace like? It's kind of the way you would literally uh, interpret that, uh, word for word, transliterated, so, um, or translated. So, mashlom chas for a man, what's your peace like, or how are you? And mashlomet is what is, uh, what, what's your peace like for a female, okay? All right, so then we have a couple more nouns here. Let's do the 
the masculine first. Okay, so we have Moray. Basically, the, the way the Hebrew is spelled there, it's actually the feminine. It's a, a female teacher. Maybe that's your assignment. Find out what the time calls. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll put the Moray, the teacher. Okay, now that we've got our vocabulary finished, let's go through it real quick. Okay, what's this word? Ani. 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 What does it mean? Ani. And I haven't given you all the Hebrewish. I should force you to start learning to read these letters. Then we have this word here. It's ata, and that means you. We have this word. Beseder. What does that mean? Okay or fine, everything's in order. We have this name, Don. Don, okay, which is Dan. We have this word here, Dod, which means uncle. We have this question here, Mashlom Cha, for a man, it means how are you, what's your peace like? We have this word here, Moray, which means teacher, it's a male teacher. How would you say female? Ah. No, how would you say female? Ah. How would you say female? Ah. Mora. Ah. I didn't say the teacher. I said, how would you say female? Ah. Mora. Mora. A female teacher is Mora. So I learned this lesson from a Mora. And then um, I became a Mora, okay, a male teacher. Rabbi actually means great master teacher. So it refers to being great or the master of something. So when someone would call someone the master, the rabbi, he was saying, you're the teacher of teachers. Okay, so you're the teacher in the synagogue that teaches all the other leaders. Okay? All right, so then on the left side, what do we have? What word here? Talmid. How would I say feminine? Just to throw that out. Talmida. How would I say plural, including men and women? Talmidim. How would I say students or disciples, only females in the room? Talmidot. Very good. So males. Okay? And the word I just said right now to say very good, which is word tov. Okay? What is its name? Sarah. Sarah, which is Sarah. And then we have the shalom. shalom. It can mean peace, but what else can it mean? Goodbye. Hello and goodbye, like aloha, right? Ciao. Ciao. It's the same concept. Yes, ciao. Hello and goodbye. Okay, and then we have the question. What? What? Ma. Okay? And then to a female, we ask. Mashlomeh, okay? How are you? What's your peace like? And then the teacher, masculine, would be Amore. Okay, so let's go to the next page and let's see how this all pans out. We have a little lesson here. And it says, Sarah Vedan. Sarah Vedan. That's Sarah and Dan. Remember the Vav is a prefix. We learned that. The, the, the prefix, I think we learned that either in the 30th or 31st uh, lesson. The Sarah Vedan is Sarah and Dan. You have the word and as a prefix using the letter Vav to the, on the second word uh, of the two words that you're combining. So if you're going to say Sarah and Dan, you put the Vav, which is a prefix, onto the second word, which means and. That's all throughout the Torah you see that. Okay? Many Torah portions start with the letter Vav. That's why you see uh, uh, Torah portions like um, Vaishlach. Um, you, you see, um, um, gosh, um, I'm type thinking Torah portions right now. I can't think of any. Uh, my, my, my brain is only thinking of this week's Kia Kitisaf, but uh, there's so many. I'm going to start with the letter B. Whenever you see the letter B on the name of a Torah portion, that means it starts with the letter B. It means and something, and, and then whatever verb is being uh, used. Okay? 
So, let's go ahead and see if we can go through this uh, little conversation. Sarah and Dan meet and exchange greetings in Hebrew. Okay, so I'm going to go through it one time, okay? So, I'm just going to, actually, Patricia, would you like to go through it with me? Sure. Okay, so you will be Sarah, I will be done. So, we won't say the names, because that's just like a play, a script, right? You're, it's just there to tell you who's talking. Okay, Shalom. Ani Dan, Ani Talmid. Shalom Dan, Ani Sarah, Mashlumcha. Beseder, Mashlumech. To. Shalom Sarah. Shalom Dan. And that was the conversation. Now let's in, let's go ahead and write at the bottom <laughs> the Hebrew. Write down the translation of Sarah and Dan's meeting and exchange greeting in Hebrew. Okay. So, Don, what are we going to put there if we spell out the letters? We're going to just do the Hebrew. That means we're not putting what it means. We're actually going to write out the letters. What are we going to put for Don? We're going to spell out what word? Shalom. 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 Go, go ahead and put shalom in the first statement there. So, S-H-A-L-O-M. I'll go ahead and write this in red right here. So, I'm just going to put D for Dan. Well, I'll just put it up at the end. Okay, so we have here what? Well, I better write it the way you guys have it on your paper. I don't want to confuse you even more. Okay, so we have Dan. What does Dan say? Shalom. Shalom. You should know how to spell that by now. Okay. What does Sarah say? Okay, she says. Mi ata, who are you? Me is who? Ata. Oh, and I guess we didn't. We should, probably should have had that in our vocabulary, shouldn't we? Mi ata, who are you? Okay. So we have me and ata. Who are you? Okay. So then Dan says what? Um, Ani Don. Don. Ani Don. He's saying I'm Dan. Ani Don. Remember, am is understood. You don't need to <coughs> use the present tense verb to be because there is no present tense verb to be in Hebrew. <coughs> you would say, I, and then your name, Ani Don. Turn to your neighbor and tell them your name. Ani. One at a time, though, right? And try it again. Ani. <laughs> Just say your name after Ani. You can say it in English. Okay, and then the other person say it back. Say your name. All right, that's right. Okay. So we we have Anitan, and what else does he say? Anit Talmid. Anit Talmid. So we have Ani. I'm a student. Tommy, I'm a student. Because she asked the question, "Who are you?" Because there's a stranger saying hello, and she goes, "Who are you?" I'm Dan. I'm a student. Okay. Where is this probably taking place? Um, give, give me a suggestion. It could be at the synagogue, it could be at the university, yeshiva, it could be at, uh, uh, in, yeah, I said the synagogue, sure. Um, it, could be, it could be at the market, it could be anywhere. We could just imagine where this is. It could be right there on campus. They just walk on campus, and she's wondering who he is. He says, oh, I'm a student here. So he would have to act, actually add something there, but he says, ani dan, ani tamid. Okay? Then what does Sarah say? Shalom. She also says, she's polite, she says, Shalom. Shalom, done. And then what does she say? Okay, she says, I'm Sarah. She says, I'm Sarah. And then she asks the question, how are you? Okay, well, how would this look in Hebrew? My pen's right now. She actually says shalom done. So let's change let's change this blue now. Shalom done. What's the Hebrew? Ani. 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 And then she says ma. What does he say in return? 
this said there. So you can either do it like this, okay. this said there, or you can put a small e in there if you'd like. Okay? So she, he says this said there, and then he asks the question. Ma.
English word and is expressed by the letter Vav, which is attached as a prefix to the following word. Now, how about the omission of am, is, and are? We have anitamid, which means what? I am a student. I am a student. Notice that am is in parentheses. We have sara talmida. What is that? Sarah is a student. Sarah is a pupil or a student. So is is understood. Though it's in parentheses. Ata talmid. You are a student. So you are a male student. Okay. So that's understood. Both the male and the are. The various forms of to be in the present tense am, is, and are are not expressed in Hebrew. They are understood. So this is your assignment. This is your homework. <laughs> I think I'm going to let you off easy. I'm going to let you use Hebrewish to, to do this conversation as homework. Bring it back so I can take a look at it and I'll just grade it. Um, um, it should give you a check to make sure you get it. You'll get to keep it though. Okay? You won't have to turn it in. Okay? So you'll go through and you'll put, um, you'll put more for teacher. You'll put Sada Vedan. And down on each on each line, you'll do that. So more and Sada Vedan, just like you saw on the previous pages. And you're going to go through this conversation, and you're going to write out the words that you think um, will be the Hebrew for this. You won't have to write the Hebrew letters, just the Hebrew. So you're going to spell out Talmid, T-A-L-M-I-D, right? For when you see student. And if it's a female student, you put Talmida. So all you do is use the previous pages for the Hebrew, not the Hebrew. We'll learn how to do the Hebrew later, okay? Uh, you should already know it, but we'll learn how to practice it later, okay? Let's close in prayer. Avinu Malkin, our Father and our King, we thank you, Abba. As you are our Father, teach us as children to learn Hebrew. Let us conversate and let us translate and let us um, uh, transliterate correctly. And Father, that we can interpret the Word of God and share the good news of the Gospel wherever we go, that Yeshua is the Messiah. In his name we pray, Yeshua, Amen. Amen. God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you. May the Lord grant you His peace. <speaking in Hebrew> May the Lord bless you and keep you And make His face to shine upon you And be gracious to you May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you May the Lord grant you His peace Adonai, but I will let her be your sin.